1861, approximately at 4.30 a.m., the artillery batteries of the Confederate States of America surrounded Fort Summit of South Carolina and fired the cannons at the Federal troops occupying the fort. After 30 hours of bombardment, bombardment from the cannons, the commander of the Fort Summit, uh, General P.G. T. Beauregard uh, saw that the supplies of food and am ammunition was running low, so he decided to surrender the troops to Major Robert Anderson of the Confederate States of America. There was only 76 men occupying the fort on those 30 hours of bombardment. There was 51 enlisted soldiers, 24 non-commissioned officer, and the one, the Major Anderson, and out of those 30 hours, not one person was killed during the 30 hours of bombardment on Fort Summit in 1861. It was not after, it was until afterwards, after the bombardment, the Confederate troops allowed the Union forces to raise the flag, the American flag, once more up. And then there was a cannon that misfired and actually killed somebody on that day. The day after, obviously, there would be April um, 13. So uh, that's a little bit of the history on the, the Civil War. And so what I wanted to do, before I introduce my guest speakers, uh, one, of, one of the gentlemen is going to be doing a slideshow presentation on Confederate currency. And you can see we have many dis some displays set up um, so you can get actually a look at some of the real stuff that was circulated and used during the Civil War. And these gentlemen will be explaining. And I have another gentleman that will be talking about an item called the Civil War token, which was used to re replace change because people were hoarding the change. Everybody got one of these when they came in the door. If you didn't get one of them, Diane or Robbie will hook you up. I've noticed uh, we had a couple people. I don't know if you guys gotten everything as you've came in. But uh, well, first, I'd like to thank uh, we have State Representative Christine Cannon for here. Oh, we're going to go up a little bit higher up on the chain. We got. Uh, so sorry, State Senator Thomas Kennedy from Brockton, State Senator from the Massachusetts State House is here. And from the House of Representatives from Brockton, Massachusetts, State Representative Christine Canavan is here. And I noticed we have a couple of city councilors at La oh, oh sorry, another state representative. We're being really blessed today. Michael Brady. Uh, another champion for the city of Brockton. And we have two city councilors at large, Mr. Chase Stewart, or Jazz, anyway, Jazz, Chase, and the dean of the city council, uh, councilor at large, Thomas Brophy is here. And I want to thank the library for graciously allowing us, I believe this is our fifth, fifth or sixth year bringing National Coin Week to uh, Brockton to the libraries. So I just wanted to give a little quick reference on everybody got one of these envelopes. What's in here? Well, obviously, I think everybody knows what this is with a pencil, and they keep putting erasers on it for people like myself who make mistakes. So don't hold it. And then also, you're going to see in this plastic sleeve here, we've got uh, a cent, a 2010. And if you'll notice below the date, there's a, a letter, a D. That means it came from the Denver Mint. Usually if you see a coin with a date and you don't see a mark like a D or an S or a P, if it has no mark, that means it came from the Philadelphia Mint because it was the Mother Mint, 1793 is when the Philadelphia Mint opened, so they don't normally put a P Mint mark on it. You see a coin without one, which you'll see in your package here. And then my friend Robbie was gracious enough to purchase everybody a genuine a replica of the original Confederate note or a Southern bank note, a replica of the money that was probably circulated and used during the 1860s. And thank you, Robbie, for purchasing that for everybody. And you'll see several bookmarkers, and two of them are relating to the new release of the new quarters, because the United States Mint is doing the national parks on quarters now. They did the state quarters, they did the territorial quarters, and since 2010, they're doing the national parks. And you'll see a bookmarker on the Lincoln set. Since 2010, they put the Union Shield on it. And then 209, you'll see four different new designs from 209, commemorating Lincoln's uh, 100 years being on the Lincoln set. 
in 209 and his 200th birthday. The first one shows the log cabin in Kentucky where he was supposedly born and raised in. And then the second design in 209 shows Lincoln sitting on a log, reading a law book because he was a log splitter, so you can see the ax there. And then the third design, you'll see Mr. Lincoln as a statesman, as a congressman in, at the Illinois State Capitol building. And then the last one in 209, the Lincoln presidency, because Abraham Lincoln was instrumental in completing the dome in the capital of Washington, D.C., so you can actually see the capital without the dome completed. You could see the little thing sticking at the top. That was a derrick, which was like a crane way back then. <laughs>